Hey, what's going on YouTube? In today's video, we are going to do some automation using Python. We are going to read an RSS feed provided by Tenable. If it meets certain criteria within the Python script that we developed today, it will create a task within Jira, all done using API. So with that being said, let's get started. All right, so to get started, obviously we want to create an account. It is free, up to 10 users. So nothing to worry about there, even for your testing purposes. To do so, we are going to go to products, view all products, and then scroll down. And then one that we are going to be using today is the work management solution. Once you are here, obviously you have the choice between continuing with Google or signing up with email, whatever is easier for you. So once you have created the account, go ahead and click on start your first project. After you fill out your your email and your um, website name, go ahead and you can answer these questions. But for the, today's example in this, we're not going to answer any of those questions. So once that has finished loading, you are going to be asked to create a name for your project. And you're also going to ask a template. What I'm going to be using is task tracking. You could find that in more templates and then just click create project. And for now, that is all we need. We now have our account. So the next thing that we are going to be doing is creating an API key for this user on this account. So to create an API key within Jira, you're going to go to the top right and you're going to click on this little button up here or icon up here and you're going to select manage account. So once you are here, you're going to go to security, the security tab. In the security, you're going to click on create and manage API tokens. And from there, we don't have any just yet. So we're going to click on create API token. Label it. And that should generate your API token. You won't be able to see this again as it mentions here. So make sure that you copy and save this somewhere safe. If it is just a lab or an example, don't worry about keeping it hidden, but just go ahead and make sure you copy it and use it. So you could use it for our Python script. All right. So the next step that we are going to cover is the Python script. I had already developed this script just the other day, but with that being said, this will be uploaded into the GitHub repository and you could go ahead and download that to your local machine to make the modifications and execute it at your own discretion. So with that being said, let's kind of go over the Python script from top to bottom. Starting at the top, you have the various libraries that we are going to import. One of the most important ones here in order to execute PowerShell commands within Python, we are going to use the sub process library, which is super cool. The reason why I use this is because in my environment, I was unable to execute this PowerShell script. So I used that PowerShell commands or that PowerShell script and just pretty much pasted it inside of this Python script so I could execute it that way. Scrolling down, you will see that we have the first function here, which is the get date difference. And in there, we have the publish date, which will get passed through later. It will set the date time and it will get the various formats set here. We will then get the current date, which is date time dot now. Then we will use we will get the difference in the date, so the current date minus the published date. And we want the days and then we will return the days. The reason why we use this function is because in Tenable, we want to get only the audits that are maybe relevant within the last seven days or maybe 30 days, whenever you want to execute this script. And if you want to just know when it is last updated or last published. So this way you could get a better understanding of what is out there and what is new. And that is what you could set here. As you can see here, the next function is the create Jira task. And in there we pass the title and the pub date, which I will show below. Here's the PowerShell commands or the PowerShell script that we pass through. Pretty straightforward. Here's your API URL. In here, you want to go ahead and set the URL that is tied to your specific environment, which you could find. This is where here. you could find the URL that you will you will paste in there. So just go to your your Jira instance and go ahead and copy and paste everything from .NET back. Make sure that you keep the rest API to an issue. That is what you need to create the task within Jira using this script. Here will you for username, you will enter your email. API token, which is what we just covered a couple minutes ago. Go ahead and paste that in here. 
Here we will go ahead and convert this to base64 and we will combine both the username and the API token which is the re required for this communication with the Jira API. Here's the some headers that we're going to be passing, the authorization which is this guy right here, then the content type, we have to pass some JSON which is found here in the body. The next important thing that you want to look at is the key. This will be your project key, which is tied to your specific environment. So go ahead again, open up your Jira instance. Once you open your Jira, go ahead to the projects tab at the top, find the project that you just created. And then in parentheses is the key that you need for that script. Down below here, summary description and issue type, that is all up to you. Uh, make sure you leave this alone. This is what is create. This is what we are creating in the script. Otherwise, unless you want to change it to whatever you want, make sure that you refer to the Jira documentation. But in this example, we are doing a new audit file as uploaded in Tenable, and that's what we want to be notified of. And the, right now we have it set to seven days, but actually we are going to do 30 days because in this example, there's nothing that is created in the last seven days. So therefore I cannot show you. So we'll do 30 days. We will then use the invoke rest method or the curl alias in PowerShell and we will assign that to the response variable. And in doing so, we need to pass these variables. So that's the API URL, the headers that we just talked about. The method that we are going to be using is post. The body is the JSON that we just discussed and we wanna get a verbose response. And if all goes well, as you can see the try block, we should get task created successfully, the issue key, and then we should get the key for that test that has been created. If we have any problems, we will say error creating the task and that's the exception message. And if we scroll down here, this is where we are actually going to execute this PowerShell. So subprocess.run, we're going to use PowerShell. We're going to use the dash command argument, PowerShell script, and we're going to capture the output in text is true. PowerShell script is this right here. So if you happen to change this, make sure you change it down here. Then we want to get the result of the script. And then the last function is the read RSS feed. In here, we are going to pass the URL, which is this one right here. And we assign that right here. So this is the RSS. So if you went to tenable.com, this is the RSS feed for the updated Tenable audit files. And that gets passed through here. Again, we have another try block. So in here, we are going to create a request and these are the various, we're going to use the URL. These are the headers that we're going to use. And this is just a way to parse the RSS feed and the things that we are looking for is going to be the, the title and the pub date. Specifically, the one that I was looking for in this example was the uh, DISA and then in there's IIS 10.0 server. If it is in the title, then we want to get the days difference which is what we pass through the pub date here. And then if the day's difference, which is returned from the function that we talked at the very beginning is less than 30, then go ahead and run this function, which we just talked about, and then pass through the title and the pub date. If there's an error, then put the error here. So at that point, go ahead and execute this script. If you're using Visual Studio Code, go to the top and just hit run without so debugging. If the script has executed successfully, If you open back up your Jira instance, you will notice that the tasks will be created. This was from earlier from testing, and this is the current one that I had just generated. And that's going to close out today's video. So what we covered today was that we went over creating a Jira account, and in there we created an API key. We used that API key in a Python script. This Python script read an RSS feed. If there was an audit file that was modified or updated from Tenable, it is created in this RSS feed. If it was within the last 30 days from the current date that we are executing this script, it will then create a task within Jira, allowing us to manage our work tasks without 
doing anything other than executing the script. And you could even automate that by setting a scheduled task. So with that being said, if you enjoyed today's video, drop a like, subscribe for more, and as always, never stop learning.